Well, the question to ask there is what is relevant, how is green relevant to Africa? You know, Africa is about to become an urban society. It's about to develop. Its economies are going to grow at between 8 and 10 percent per year with the right governance over the next 20 years. It is going to be a place of massive change. That change has got to be green. It's got to be green for two reasons. One is because we want to create cities we want to live in. We don't need more traffic jams of Lagos. We need cities we can get around in, air we can breathe, food we can eat. We need to avoid the mistakes of the Chinese and have water we can drink. So if we don't green this transition, we're going to end up with a real mess. That's one. So green is an imperative for Africa. The second thing is we have a climate change problem. We need to make sure that it's consistent with climate. It just so happens it's the same agenda. That is, a city we can get around in a mass transit without fumes from cars happens to be a low carbon society. We get rid of fuels. Now, why is this important? Because Africa is the most vulnerable place in the world when it comes to climate change. It is the poor in Africa who will suffer on the current projections of climate change. We've got to head it off. Now, yes, China needs to work, India, the US, but also if we make this green transition, this economic transition green in Africa, Africa will play a huge part in its own right of helping head off climate change. So it's got to be an African story. There's no choice if we want any kind of real and sustainable future for our kids and our grandchildren. The big opportunity is to design this properly. If we get some thinking now, we know, remember we've got to do things fast. From a climate perspective, we have only a few years to make sure that our transition is green. From an urbanisation perspective, the cities are already changing really, really, really quickly. You know, Nairobi is growing gangbusters, as is Lagos, as is, for that matter, Casablanca. How do we actually ensure that we put planning in place now so they grow in a way that we can manage rather than becoming out of control and becoming like the disasters that Mumbai was or Sao Paulo has been in the past? So we've got to act now. So we need, for that, overseas help. We're going to need experts from other countries to provide technical assistance and low-cost capital. We need low-cost capital. Because most of what we've got to do is very big ticket, big capital expenditure, infrastructure, water systems, energy systems, railway systems, like BRT, bus rapid transit systems. These are all capex things. It just so happens, it just so happens that around the world now, there's more capital than we've ever needed before, ever had before in the history of humanity. And it's at incredibly low interest rates because of the mess that was created in the banking sector in France and Japan and Europe. Interest rates are now very low. In fact, 12% of European institutional capital is in negative interest rate bonds, you know, which is like no way to pay a pension. They need yield. Where's the yield going to be? Fast growing economies. There's a, there's a marriage. There's a marriage they made here. Africa can use this green story to attract the investors, all of whom want green, all of whom are conscious of long term risks to climate change. That's the pact. That's the opportunity. We need to take the leadership of last year's assembled world leaders and agreeing to a treaty and since then ratifying it and start to make it real. So, so far, it's great having ambitions. We have a very, very difficult agreement in terms of our targets of two degrees warming maximum, preferably 1.5. It's a steep challenge. It's the right, correct, target because there is no other choice on the planet. But doing it is another matter. Now, how do we make it real? It's not a matter of government policy and here and there. We need investment plans. We now need to convert our national climate change plans into green investment plans for Morocco, for Nigeria, for Kenya, for Tanzania, etc. And then we can start having the negotiation we need to have with the people who will bring capital. But until we actually have that plan, there's nothing to negotiate. So that's the 2017 task. We start at this COP. I, my ambition for this COP is that all countries leave this knowing the job they've got to do before the next COP, and that is mapping out the investment plan. There are a thousand and one ways we know how to get private capital into public priority investments. We've been doing it in USA and Japan and Europe for 150 years. We simply need to be thinking green, which is what we haven't been doing. That is the current policy priority, the policy priority of the millennium, which is to transition our economies to low carbon, climate resilient, 
secure, safe places where we can grow robust economies in Africa. That's all. It's not hard. So all these tools are sitting on the, in the bottom shelves of treasuries around the world. Uh, there are things like guarantees. There are things like zoning rules around transport. There are things like uh, first loss provisions for bonds for Johannesburg, who did a green bond a few years ago. Uh, so they're there. What we have already in the world, which we can mobilise, is a whole lot of public sector banks, like the European Investment Bank, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, who can be mobilised to leverage private sector capital. At the moment, I'm going to say they're being used very inefficiently because they're doing 100% loans to projects. We have all of these investors out there who need hand-holding. Pension funds and insurance funds are shy. Their main job is not to lose their money. Because they lose their money, they can't pay the pension in 20 years' time. They need public finance institutions like development banks to provide first loss capital in various forms, and there are a dozen different kinds, blended finance I was talking about this morning, so that these investments can be made and they can be bought by pension funds and insurance funds. Very simple, really. And then when you get out of the hood, sure, hire a banker. But just remember, all these tools exist and they've been used for 150 years. Just remember that. This is nothing new. We know how to build infrastructure. We've already built highways around the world. We've already built ports around the world. We've just simply got to think green.